We all live. Good morning. I'm Pastor Drew Bradford from Riverside Christian Assembly. What a joy, what not order the like. It is to be with you today as we continue winning souls, making disciples, giving God all the glory for it. I'm holding my newest book, The Fall of the House of Ahab. You will love it. You can pick it up on Amazon. I'm seeing people getting it, loving it, enjoying it, growing in Christ. You love the Old Testament stories. You love sermons. You are going to absolutely love this book. So it's available now. Also, do us a favor, go to YouTube and, and subscribe to the Riverside Christian Assembly channel. We want to go live on YouTube also. So we're adding more videos that we're excited about that. Also, if you like these teachings, go to the Riverside Christian Assembly app at the App Store. It's free. You'll love it. Well, that being said, let's pray and let's dive into the word this morning. Our Father in heaven, we delight ourselves in you. Your word is deep in our hearts. Lord, we are so thankful to be the sons of God. Lord, thank you that we have a joint inheritance. Thank you that we can be found in Christ, and it's only Christ. Lord, we don't need vain philosophies. We don't need empty traditions. Lord, we don't need uh, all the rules and regulations that religion wants to hold on us. Father, we need you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the great gift of life that you've given us. Help us to walk in these truths. Lord, we pray for Pastor Jeannie that you would heal her body, do great and mighty miracles among us. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, friends, family, let us continue our study on the book of Colossians today. I would entitle it Subtraction by Addition. Let me say that again. Subtraction by Addition. It's like the trader ship that, that is so loaded with, with goods that they want to sell. They've added more boxes. They've added more bags. They've added more passengers. and They set off at sea because they added so much, they begin to sink. It becomes too much weight on them. It's kind of like the basketball player right before the game. And the coach gives a rousing, confusing pep talk. And he tells them the offense, the defense, the press, uh, how many times to dribble, how to shoot the ball. And oh, yeah, don't be nervous about anything. And oh, yeah, and oh, yeah. And keeps on giving them little nuggets of advice. And pretty soon all that addition, the player gets out there, is confused and loses the ball game. It was too much. The great news of the gospel of Jesus Christ is the simplicity of it. There is a God, and he saw our sinful, fallen state, and he sent his son Jesus as one of us to understand us and always to be tempted as we're tempted to represent us back to God. And this man, Jesus, died on the cross for our sins. And if you will, here's the simple part. Believe it. Believe that he died for sins and rose from the dead. He will send his Holy Spirit into your spirit and you can be born again. We're going to read a lengthy passage in the book of Colossians because there were some that were trying to add to this glorious gospel. Let's pick it up in chapter 2, verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you. I don't want to be spoiled. I don't want to be taken captive through philosophy and vain deceit, through the traditions of men, through the rudiments of this world, and not after Christ. They're trying to add things. They're trying to say, you need our tradition. He'll explain a little more. For in him, in Christ, dwell the fullness of the Godhead bodily. You need Christ. He's all you need. He is God. And that's what it's saying right there. And you are complete in him, which is the head of principality and power, in whom you were circumcised with the circumcision not made with the hands, but the putting off of the flesh of the body, but the flesh of sins in Christ. Buried with him in baptism, wherein too you've risen, and through faith that you have this operation with God who raised him from the dead. You don't need these empty religions and traditions. You've died with Christ. You've had a spiritual circumcision. You've had a baptism that represented your old life being dunked under and buried. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh. He's now quickened or made to life. He's resurrected together with him, having given you giving you forgiveness of all your trespasses. Verse 14, blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances that was against you, which was contrary to us. He took it away, nailing it to the cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he slew, he showed them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man judge you, whether what you eat, meat, or drink, whether you drink, or whether you respect a, a holy day or a new moon or a Sabbath day. These things are shadows and things to come. But the body is of Christ. Let no man beguile you. We started off saying, 
Don't let any man spoil you. Don't let any man beguile you. Don't let any man subtract from you by adding these extra things. Because you, you, they want you to worship angels and introduce you to things that, that are not seen. They have fleshly, puffed up, arrogant minds. And they're not beholding the head, which is Christ which all the body and the joints are band together and knit together. And this is the increase of God. Wherefore, if you are dead with Christ from the rudiments of this world, why? Why would you living in this world subject yourself to these ordinances? Like do not taste, do not touch, do not handle. All these things perish with, with the using after the commandments and the doctrines of men, which things indeed you have shown the wisdom. Would you worship it, neglecting the body and, and trying to satisfy the flesh? Here he's making an argument. You've died with Christ. Christ is the head. Christ is the fullness. Don't add to this. It's only Christ, not vain philosophies. It's only Christ, not hollow traditions. It's only Christ, not empty rules. You see, he's making it very clear. When he begins, he says, I don't want anybody to take you captive. That was the word used of, uh, of human traffickers. Uh, of those that would enslave other human beings, they would shackle them and they would take them captive. That's the phrase he's using. He's saying, look, you're in Christ, you're alive. Now don't be taken captive. You see, in Christ, we, we don't live like we used to live. Everything is changed. Everything is new. The good news is not just for intellectuals. You see, the, the book of Colossians is a letter that Paul wrote to this church that he had never been to. And a major reason he's writing is because these teachers that he had never met, he had never seen with his eyes, they were called the Gnostics. They had risen up in the church. And Paul has to write the other half and say, here's their heresy. Here's where they're wrong. And so we don't know the, their side of the first letter. We don't know exactly what they told Paul, but we only know what Paul's telling them. So we got to read between the lines a little bit. But the Gnostics were notorious for saying only intellectuals, only the elite can be saved. And it's through the knowledge that we possess that we teach them. And here he's saying, no, it's not like that at all. It's in Christ. It's not in some special knowledge. I don't need any intermediaries between me and God. I don't need a man, even if he, he's ordained, even if he's licensed, even if he wears a cool hat, even if he's got a collar. I don't need anybody to get in my way between me and God, except for the man, Christ Jesus, who is the mediator between all. We used to take communion in a unique way that I loved. I used to get one of those pieces of flat bread and we'd have a bowl of juice and it'd be at the front of the church and I would tell everybody, if you'd like to take communion together, we are one body, we're one loaf and I would hold up the flat bread. I say it's unified, it's together now, but each one of us has a part of it. You come up and you rip from that and you remember that Christ's body was broken for you. You receive because you know that he broke for you and then you rip it and then you dip it and, and, and realize what Christ has done. And it was a powerful expression of, of the unity we have in Christ. It was a powerful expression of each individual coming to Christ for themselves. You see, Christ is the all in all. He, he warns us against those that talk about astronomy and astrology and, and the worship of the stars. And hey, hey, I, are my stars aligned today? What's, what's my zodiac signal today? I got to make sure I read my horoscope today. He says, that's nonsense. It's all about Christ. You see, it's not about empty, hollow tradition. It's about Jesus Christ. Tonight, there'll be an outreach at the church huh? when many people are celebrating Halloween and kids are trick-or-treating, getting candy and wearing costumes. We're going to open up the church. We're going to have cars there. We're going to do that trunk or treat. We're going to give out candy and we're going to get to know the neighborhood. I've seen people come to that, come to church, come to Christ, come to baptism and be on fire. I've seen it before. And I know from time to time people will criticize, say, hey, that's the devil's birthday, or how dare you observe or do anything on that day. I said, look, those are just costumes. That's just candy. We preach Christ. We, we preach the essence of salvation. And if it's an opportunity to reach Christ without condemning our conscience or, or dirtying or polluting our soul, then look, we're giving out some candy to the kids. But what's Paul saying? He says, don't let anybody judge you. If you want to celebrate a new moon, you're, you're entitled, go ahead. If you want to eat that food or that food, go ahead. But the, these Gnostics had come in and they had made it very clear, hey, food really matters. Is that what Jesus said? Look at Matthew chapter 15, verse 11. He says, it's not that which enters the body that defiles a man, 
but it's that which comes from his heart that shows that he's been defiled. Again, in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5, Paul writes to him, he says, all food is sanctified. All food can be cleansed. Even a pulled pork shrimp sandwich. This is, it's not going to cause damage to your soul. It's not going to cause damage to your conscience. If you understand, listen, it's about Jesus is the head. Jesus is the fullness. He's saying they come and they want this outer expression. They want you guys to physically get circumcised. They want you guys to outwardly observe this festival and this high day and this holy day. And Paul's saying all those things are shadows. Christ is the light. When I was a kid and maybe you'd have a sleepover, you'd have a flashlight and you do a, a sock puppet show or you make different uh, animal figures with, with your hands and there they are, the butterfly on the wall and there's the dog and there's the snake and oh, there's a shadow on the wall. It was kind of cool. Christ is not in the shadow. Those holidays are shadows. They're supposed to teach you something. They're supposed to teach a, a deeper truth. I, I get that. And I think that's, that's fine. That's wonderful. But Christ is the light. Don't miss the light because you're so excited about the shadows and the empty traditions. They, they can teach you something. I know from time to time people say, Pastor, we should observe the, the Passover. We should observe the Jewish festival of, of, uh, tab tabernacles. And listen, if you want to do that, go ahead. It says, if you want to, go ahead. But if, if you want to observe Christmas, go ahead. If you want to observe another day, it says, don't be so judgmental. You're not understanding the big picture. These things are not most important. You see, it's about Christ and, and not empty rules. It's about the character of Christ. In the WWE, it was popular not because of the rules of, of if you can punch a guy four times or ten times or if you can touch the rope or if you can jump off the, the highest part. It was popular because of the characters, because of Hulkamania, brother. Snap it to a slim gym because all the different characters they brought out and they put up and, and the fun was in the characters. So it is, it's in Christ. It's not don't touch, don't taste. That, that's not going to get us anywhere. You died to this world. Why would rules really help you now? Did you catch the cosmic procession? It says principalities and powers. He, he's made a spectacle out of them. He makes them march before him. My office, there's a, a dry erase board. I, I write things, then we delete things, and we write things, and, and then we, we cross them out. And, and that's what he's saying. He's saying, you had a massive IOU against God, and he wiped it out. He washed it. It's, it's clean. It's, it's gone now. Isn't that a great thought? He's saying all the handwriting that was against you has now been eliminated. I wondered what happened to Jefferson Davis, the president of the Confederate Army, after he lost uh, the Civil War. He was defeated. And there's a declaration of defeat. And then he was in prison for, for two years in a fort. And, and Lincoln was busy handing out pardons. But Jefferson Davis didn't want a pardon. And so he went back to a home along the Mississippi Gulf. And, and for the rest of his life, he wrote a, his memoirs. He wrote books. And, and they were entitled The Rise and the Fall of the Confederate Government. And I'm thinking, what a loser thing to do. <laughs> you lost the war. And now you're going to write a book about how you lost the war. I've been to the South a little bit. And I've seen Confederate flags. And I've seen people get excited about reenactments. Reenactments what? You... You lost the war. Why, why not get a pardon? Why not be forgiven? Why not move forward with something better in life than wickedness and evil and wrong? Why would you harbor onto that after losing? There's a pardon that God wants to give us. It's not found in philosophies. It's not found in traditions. It's not found in rules. It's found in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you that we can be forgiven, that we can move forward. Lord, we pray your Holy Spirit would lead us and guide us in all truth. Thank you that Christ is the head, that, that the fullness of God is found in Christ. Thank you for the light of Christ that shines in our hearts. Help us to walk with you close. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, friends, family, it is always a joy to be with you in the mornings. It's a blessing. I want to invite you to come on out this Sunday. we got our potluck. Bring us aside. Bring a dessert. Hey, thank you for everybody that came out last week to the couples ministry. It was awesome. Hey, we got more baptisms, Lord willing, coming this Sunday. So we're excited about that. 
Well, let me give some shout outs and, and then we'll, we'll call it a day. Miss Jeannie, good to see you. Miss Kathleen, good to see you. Jeffrey Walker, Melissa Ask the Glory, good to see you. Carlos Candace, good to see you guys. Miss Lauren, Don, I'm excited about next week. Thank you for getting the salmon. Come on, catch us on a lot of fish. The Lord loves that. Oh, Olivia, good to see you today. What a blessed day. Andre, as unique to King Deanna, good to catch you. Debbie Mac, Kevin Mac, send me ministries. Mario, Arnold, good to see you today. Say love, Felix, good to catch you. A lot of champions in life watching. Aaron Tremble, good to see you today. A lot of friends, family, may the Lord bless you, watch over you. Like my good friend Greg told me, when you hear the good news of 